Amigos, we're gonna use my head and we're gonna swap it with John Paul. The best way is on green screen, but if, if you don't have a green screen, use a white wall and I'm gonna show you how to use a rotor brush. Welcome amigos to the School of Motion Graphics. My name is CM De La Vega. We have another exciting tutorial today. It is on swapping heads using video instead of a still. I know a lot of you have asked questions on this tutorial on how to use video. So this tutorial will address this issue. It's simple, it's fun, it's not too complicated. Um, instead of green screen, which is the easiest way to do it, we're gonna use a different method. And yeah, let me show you the techniques. Let's get started right away. Okay, amigos. This is the original shot of John Paul. We already have the tracker that we used, that we tracked in Mocha. And I shot this shot of myself. And let's play it. Amigos, we're gonna use my head and we're gonna swap it with John Paul. The best way is on green screen, but if you don't have a green screen, use a white wall. And I'm gonna show you how to use a rotor brush. Perfect. And one thing I want you to notice is this is 29.97 frames per second and our footage footage is 30 frames per second what we can do we can fix it and right click and go to interpret footage and go to main and let's conform to frame rate and let's just put 30.00 hit okay let's make a composition from this from this file and let's drag it into the composition icon and it'll, it'll make it a composition the same frame rate and resolution as our footage hit control k to bring up the composition settings let's the start frame i always like starting at zero 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 and what we can do is right here hold on to control and click on it and it adobe after effects gives you different options you can see it through frames or you can see it with seconds and frames. So let's go seconds and frames. Now I started speaking around 115, so let's go to 115, hit B, and this is our in point for our work area. Right click on our work area, and let's say trim to comp work area. Amigos. Perfect. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a rotor brush like I mentioned, and to use a rotor brush, we need to be inside the layer window. Right now we're in the composition window. You can see right here, we have the underline signifying that we're in the composition window and we need to get into the layer window. How do you do that? Simple. What we do is just click on, we're gonna double click on our layer and automatically we're in the layer window. Now for the rotor brush, it's this little icon and we need to open the brush panel. So if it's not selected, select it. And in the brush panel, in the diameter, you can increase or you can decrease the size of your brush. And for those who don't know how to use a rotor brush, it's pretty simple. Just draw an outline on the areas that you want to keep. For example, let's draw here, my face. And what the rotor brush is going to do, it's going to detect the edges. Let's, let's uh, zoom in. It's going to detect the edges and draw an outline. As you can see, it didn't select the inside of my, my, my glasses. So what I can do is I can add to it, and it'll add to it. Now, for example, if there's an area that you it, it took too much and you want to subtract, you can always hold on to the Alt key and draw on that area and it'll subtract it from the area. For example, let's say we want to subtract this one, it'll subtract this. Let's undo. And actually we want to add a little bit of this area. And this is a good example. You see it, it selected too much. What we can do is make that diameter smaller, hit Alt and then just draw on this and perfect. Oops, let's see, perfect. Now the next thing, amigos, is that you see these this little line with arrows. This is the area that the rotor brush is going to work. Now what we need to do is we need to basically set it up. It's going. This is the first first frame, so it's very important to always start at the rotor brush at frame the very first frame. And let's work this area, and then let's make this. Let's just stretch it all all the way out. And usually I like going frame by frame just to make sure that the area that the rotor brush is selecting, will it's selecting the right area. I might have to add some area. I might have to subtract some areas. In this example, it's almost 10 seconds long. It's going to take a very long time. So I'm going to skip that process. 
what I want to show you is we can toggle through these different icons. You can see the black and white mat. You can see basically on black, you can see it on red. And if we go to the properties of the rotor brush, we can refine the mat. And you're gonna pretty much just work with these four parameters, the feather, the contrast, the shift edge, and reduce chatter. So the feather and the contrast, they work together. Uh, if I have a high value of feather, uh, feather, it pretty much just smooths it out. I don't know why they call it feather. It really should be called smooth, but just think of it as a smoother. And if we hit contrast, if we drop it down, the value, you can see it'll soften the edge. So the contrast is really like feather, and the feather is like smooth. All you really need to know is that they kind of work together. So once you change one, immediately you know adjust the value for the second. So in this example, let's drop it down to seven. And for the contrast, let's leave it, let's see, 30. Let's leave it at 30. Now the shift edge, the shift edge, we can we can increase or decrease a mat. In this case, let's decrease it. Let's shrink it by, let's say, 40%. And that's actually, let's see. Let's see what happens if we go 50. No, I like it at 30. Reduce chatter is to reduce any noise crawl that exists along the edge of, of your map. And let's... A value of 25 to 50% is good. Let's go 30. And let's go frame by frame. We can always check on decontaminate edge colors. And what it will do pretty much, the edges, it'll blend the edges. Sometimes there is an edge color and it'll take away the edge color. And the last thing, amigos, is once you're done, is to hit this button, freeze. And what freeze is, it'll lock the rotor brush. And I guess the best analogy to explain to you is it'll create a sort of proxy file. It won't really be a proxy file. It's just caching all that information. That way you can easily access this, this layer, this rotor brush add effects to it and it won't take a long time to render. As you can see, it'll take a very long time to render. It'll probably take like five minutes just to lock it, to cache it. And by doing so, you can quickly access it. So let's just sit back. I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna unpause it again when it's done. We're back, <laughs> we're back. Now once it's done, you can check it out. You can see there's some spots right here, but that's okay, we can, we'll, we'll fix that. So let's go back to the composition and let's go back to the project. Let's call this, let's rename this and let's call it video, video head. Now let's nest this video head inside another comp. So let's drag it into this comp and we're, we're going to call this video head final. And let's double click and let's go to it. Make sure that you're in video head final. Let's create Let's click on the lips tool. Let's create a mask. And for example, let's say if you selected the neck, which could have been a strategy is to select also the neck. You would also do the same method as well. So let's decrease. Let's grab these handles. Let's grab these handles. Let's go here. And let's increase the feather to 35 pixels. Let's move this. So what we want to do is pretty much just feather. Let's go to 50. Let's just feather this out. Let's see. See, so I move a little bit. The key, like I said, is to always remain still. It's it's always hard to do it, but you can always keyframe it. You can always move it. Okay, let's go back to our shot. Let's bring in the video head final and the anchor point, hit W for the anchor point, really important. Let's move it all the way down here and let's scale it down. I think 16%, make sure you're in the, at the beginning and let's bring this up. Now, like I said, the idea is to pretty much just replace the head and it's going to have to be a little bit bigger 
and as you can see my head structure is a little bit different so let's let's cheat it let's make it a little bit wider let's move it over we can maybe make it a little bit bigger and let's parent it to the tracker let's take out the audio let's go to half the resolution so we can do a ram preview really quick and let's check it out so so far it's looking pretty good i know some of you have asked on how to do manual adjustments and i'll show you i think i might have to do a couple manual adjustments on this one so I'll show you how to do some manual adjustments on your tracker so you can manually adjust. Sometimes you need to adjust the position of, of the head. Sometimes you need to adjust the scaling or the rotation. So we'll do one on the scaling. We'll do one on the position. Now this is a tricky shot because John Paul is moving his body. is twisting his body. I just had my face moving, uh, facing forward. He moves a little bit his head to more of sometimes he's uh, his face is facing front. Sometimes it goes to a three quarters. This is a little tricky shot, but it's a good example to see what you can get away with, what you can do. Okay, you see, I, I just saw it right there. You can see that part of his ear showed up, so we can do a manual adjustment on that section. It's around seven, eight, nine seconds. Right there, too, some of his... Face, we might have to do, we're definitely going to do a manual adjustment on that section. But overall, it's, it's, it's looking pretty good overall. It's looking nice. I think we stop here. And let's play it back. That is with no motion blur. It'll help out with some motion blur. So what we can do is let's create a new null object and let's call it manual. Sorry, guys. Let's call it manual adjustment. And all this is good. And I think it was here. You see right here. So at eight, uh, what we're going to do is the tracker. Let's select the pick whip and let's parent it to the manual adjustment and hit P for position let's zoom in here click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe and let's go frame by frame so you can see right there let's go to full resolution uh, we have to slide over my face so let's slide it over perfect and let's go to 8.15. I like going in increments of 5 or 10. This one, let's go to 9. You might move it over. So it's totally up to you. So this one at 9.10. Let's move it over. Okay, so I think it's looking pretty good. That's how you do a manual adjustment on the position. Now, I wouldn't do the scale because if you hit scale, remember the null object is right here. So if you hit scale, it's going to scale it from there. And remember when we, when we changed the anchor point of the video head, we changed it down here to the bottom. So if you, if you need to make a manual adjustment on the scale, I would actually do it on the video head final comp. And it's the same thing. You just add some keyframes. For this one, I think... Maybe let's see where we can do a little scale. It's not bad. I mean, it goes a little bit big on, on some spots. It's a little cartoony in some spots. 
let's see, maybe here. So let's go to 415. And let's put a keyframe. Let's go to five. It's a little big, so we can scale it down. Maybe 63. 65. And then let's just go back because everything else looked fine. So we need to go back. So let's go back at 515. Actually, no. Let's go back to six. Actually, it looks kind of good. Now we decrease the size so you can see it's showing up here. So definitely by eight, eight frames, eight seconds, we can go back up. So it'll slowly go back up to this size. Let's see, and you might have to go and sometimes go frame by frame, make sure that everything looks good. And the last thing amigos is, the last thing is to match the skin tones, the colors, the color temperature, you might have a different, you know, you shot it at a different time of day or shot it at a, you know, I shot this outside and I shot my head indoors. So what you can do is click on the video head final, go to effect, color correction and levels. This is an easy technique. And this little icon, let's go to the red channel. It'll show the red and blue and green channel individually. And for your levels, let's go to the reds. And what we want to do is match the luminance of my face with his neck and his arms. So just play with the shadows and with the highlights. Actually, this is, it's pretty close. It's not too far off. This is something that you have to experiment a little bit. It's just trial and error. Let's go to the blue channel. Let's go to RGB. You can always add an exposure, color correction exposure. Where is the exposure? Maybe a little bit down, minus 0.3, maybe minus 0.2. So these are some techniques that I use. And let's add a blur. I, let's add fast blur on this one, maybe one pixel. And that's it. Amigos, pretty much that's it for this tutorial on how to do a video head swap. Activate motion blur. Let's activate it. And let's check it out. Okay, amigos, let's activate the, the volume and let's check it out. Let's see it. Let's go to fit up to 100. And let's take out these null objects and let's hit play. Amigos, we need my head and we're going to swap it with John Paul. The best way is on green screen, but if you don't have a green screen, go to my wall and I'm going to show you how to use the motor punch. Amigos, there you go. And that's how you do a video head swap. That is it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe to our YouTube channel and to the School of Motion Graphics newsletter. It is completely free. Click on the link below. And amigos, always stay creative, let it flow like agua from Managua. We'll see you next time.